I get a lot of comments and see a lot of comments on other creators' channels about how you learn how to analyze films. And it's an interesting question. I don't think there's a clear answer to it necessarily. And I'm also not convinced that I'm the best person to answer it because I never trained to watch films. I never really did any like formal learning around that. I think I did one course as an undergraduate. And yet I have kind of worked out professionally doing that. So what I wanted to share today isn't a full answer to that question, which I'll probably cover in another video. It's just a technique that you can use to start analyzing films. And this is called close reading. Now, I actually picked this up from a Bible study podcast that I listen to. Don't ask me why I'm not a Christian. Uh, and basically what they do is they pick uh, the area of reading that they're covering in the Bible. That's going to be like a selection of chapter and verses. Uh, and then they'll go, OK, so what's happening in this verse? And then what's happening in this sentence? And then what's happening with the individual word choices here? And it's like a way of approaching looking at a text where you can really break it down and start thinking about its constituent elements. So the way that I want to do this is that you go out and you pick a film that you really love, or maybe it's actually a film you don't love, but you think is really interesting. And you find a section in it which you are con kind of continuously fascinated by, something that you maybe think about a lot in that film uh, or that you keep coming back to, something that you kind of reference as you're making your own work maybe. And we're going to watch that about three times and pick it apart for different reasons each time. So I've picked a film called Millennium Mambo and I generally think this has like my favourite opening of any film that I've ever seen. So we're just going to watch it, it's about two minutes, and then we're going to take a step back and we're going to look at some constituent elements of it and then we're going to rewatch them again. The first time that you watch this, I want you to just think about what the images are presenting to you. So ignore the audio, uh, don't worry about maybe even like the acting, just think about what the images are presenting, okay? And just a warning by the way, this sequence is full of flashing lights, so if that's something that you have a problem with, if you um, are photosensitive in any way, I would not recommend watching the rest of the video. Oh 存款里还有五十万，五十万花完了就分手吧。这都是他十年前的事了。那时候是二零零一年，全世界都在迎接二十一世纪，庆祝千禧年。So I just love this opening. I think it's a really fascinating way of starting a film and there's so much to unpick in it. For me, there's this real strong sense of like mystery and romance, um, but also like um, attention, I suppose, about it. So just thinking about the visuals of it, let's see what we can pick out as being significant. If we just look at this opening moment, you have these really aggressively blue strip lights, these fluorescents, um, floating above the main character 
and they're flickering because this is shot in slow motion. So everything is moving not that slowly. I think it's about half speed or maybe even like three quarters speed. Um, and we have this woman in front of us who's facing away from the camera. So we're following from behind. And there's something lovely and dynamic about all the motion here, right? There's this like real depth of framing. Uh, there's this long corridor that's leading the eye down. This sense of something in front of this young woman. And then we also have um, the kind of empty space on either sides and we can see her looking around. And there's that motion that we're seeing in it, not just because we're moving forward, but also that she's moving independently to the camera and her hair is swishing around. And then she turns and looks at the camera here, which is like a really fascinating moment in this narrative, I guess, that the director, Hao Xiaoxian, has set up. Um, so like, who is the camera? What's going on? Who's she looking at? And that's something that we'll return to. That's one of the mysteries that's kind of set up here. And we can see these cars going by. We can see her smoking. And from the way that she's moving, then we start to have a sense that she's like, she's a young woman. She probably like parties, certainly seems like it. Um, we're in a modern place. We're in this kind of like grimy and yet kind of futuristic setting in this, in this long kind of overpass. Um, and we can see there's like, it's busy. She's going somewhere. There's a sense of motion from the camera and from the cars going by her as well. Cool. Okay, let's try it again. And what we're going to do now is just think about the narrative. And by narrative here, like um, it's in a more like busy sequence, you'll have like actual things going on that you can look at and the ways in which characters interact with each other. But here it's much more about the mystery of who this character is, what the setting is. And I want you to pay attention to the dialogue here as a way of communicating that story, uh, because that's most, of the, that's most of how we see the story on screen in this moment. By the way, the subtitles here block out some of the frame. Um, this film is not very well known, and that's one of the reasons why I've selected it, because I think it's really important um, to come at this stuff as a tabula rasa, right? Which means blank slate. So you're supposed to kind of come in fresh to the film, even if it's one that you know really well, you've got to kind of, kind of try and just empty your head of what you know about it and just think about how the filmmakers are communicating the ideas behind the film to you. Because we're not just like enjoying the film, we're trying to work out what the tools used are to create a response in the audience, what it is about the text of the film that works for us, okay? And yeah, so unfortunately that this film is really, really good. Hao Xiaoxian is a very well-known Taiwanese filmmaker, um, but his work has largely not been released in the UK, EU, and USA, um, not in like premium home formats, despite having some really significant work. Happily, actually, this film has a 4K restoration that's currently doing the rounds in America, so hopefully we'll get to see that having a wider release. Um, if I could get a 4K Blu-ray of this, I would be wildly over the moon. So, Okay, let's watch again, and remember, um, pay attention to the dialogue, and specifically like the narrative and the way that's constructed and communicated. Hello 存款里还有五十万，五十万花完了，就分手吧。So what's interesting about how the dialogue is communicated in this scene is that the narrator is the lead actor. So she's Shu Qi is the name of the actor, and she's talking about the character she's playing, but we're unclear who she is supposed to be. The the third person that she's using is like a distancing device to talk about this character. Um, so like, who's the narrator? And that's a really weird, like mysterious kind of thing to do. Um, and this person, whoever they are, is talking from the future, uh, the then future of 2011, about the year 2001. 
So there's this narrative distance between the narrator and the character. And we are being told about this woman that we're seeing on screen, but not in her own words, it would seem, um, through that distance, right? Even if it is the same actor playing them, kind of a, a mysterious thing to do. So one of the tensions being introduced in the sequence is that we have this really distant narration occurring. Uh, someone from 10 years later and not the person who we're seeing on screen talking about this person's life. But the main character who we are seeing on screen is deliberately looking at the camera repeatedly during this sequence. So, like, we have this, this double mystery, right? Or triple mystery. Who is this character? Who is this person who's narrating about them? Uh, and, you know, who is the camera, as it were? Like, who are we supposed to be? And just so you don't get it wrong, like, this is an art house film. Um, this isn't a mystery film. There isn't really an answer to any of these questions but they're about introducing like a narrative perspective on the character and on the story that will then be carried out throughout the film. We don't have time to get into the whole movie, but like later on we'll see stuff like the camera off to being stationary and doing repeated moves back and forward. And these are all like narrative distancing techniques. So it's like part of the storytelling style of the film. <laughs> And that's something that's kind of mirrored as we were talking about in the the imagery of this sequence because we have these like repeated patterns kind of continuing down this this corridor the lights these archways and so there's this sense that this woman is navigating through to some further distant point right as kind of referenced by that voiceover cool so we're going to do this one more time and this time i want you just to think about the sound design so we're going to think about the sound effects, we're going to think about the music, and we might, uh, in, in like a fuller bodied scene, we might be thinking about stuff like vocal delivery and things like that. Uh, in this case, we don't have some of that stuff, but that is interesting in itself. So let's go back to the start and we'll do this again. Oh,这是有办法找到他。打电话给他。求他回来。反反复复。像咒语。像催眠。他跑不掉。又回来了。他告诉自己。so the way I see it, there's like three distinct things happening with the audio. Uh, firstly, we have the music, which is this like beautiful track. It's called A Pure Person, and the composer is called Lim Gyeong, I think. And one thing I love about the music in this scene is that it kind of mirrors that motion that we're seeing. Uh, and again, there's like a sense of building towards something, right? You have this initial brief like drum beat like percussion type thing and then the chords start to come in and i don't know if you notice but i always smile when that happens i don't know there's something so like um it makes my brain tick you know in a good way it makes my my little lizard brain is like that's good we like that and then the second thing to consider is the sound design right this is what we refer to as like sound effect um things that are dubbed in to give you the sense of like realism about where people are and it's significant that this scene has none of that so there are many things that there could be sound design here. We could hear um, her feet as she walks through this tunnel, uh, the footsteps. We could hear the taxi that goes by in the middle of the sequence. We could hear like a kind of roar of nightlife or something like that if she's in a city. But we don't hear any of that. There's absolutely no sound design. And again, that's in some ways like an aesthetic distancing device, right? 
But um, one of the things about this close reading technique is we should start to look for links between these things. So it's interesting that the choice in the script is to describe her in one point as hypnotised. And we see that in this sequence because there's this hypnotic sense, right? Like we're moving through life in this languid sort of way. And one of the ways that that's produced for the audience, this sensation, is in not having any um, sound effects here. So we don't have a sense of there being a real world beyond this moment in time. And then the last part of that sound kind of scape is the vocal delivery of the actress, Shu Ki, who's both narrating and also non-verbally playing the character of this scene. And her voiceover sounds really, to me, like kind of confessional. It's very softly delivered and it's almost like a whisper at times. It feels very close. It's like you're sitting right next to this person while she's telling you about someone else that she knew. And that's fascinating when we think about the fact that she's describing herself as far as we can understand within the narrative of the film. So that's close reading. And hopefully you can start to see how there are links in all sorts of aspects of filmmaking in terms of how the narrative is communicated by filmmakers. And sometimes not even narrative, sometimes just like tone, feeling, sensation, like is the case here. And that is just two minutes of that film. And yet it's something that can really hold up to that kind of analysis. I'm going to link a couple of video essays in the description and show some on screen here that do really good jobs of talking about very limited moments in films uh, and kind of blowing those up into like a larger critique of discussing the film. And this can be a really powerful technique. If you're looking for a way to analyse things, but you don't know where to start, I would recommend with a close reading of your favourite sequence. That's it from me. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll see you soon. Bye for now.